about your Detroit Red Wings finally have a home. It's right right here at Red Wings Rant. Uh, we're going to have some fun today. Whoopsies. There we go. Whee! That's how production works. <laughs> we're, we're, uh, if you're listening to the podcast, of course, it's Monday, but we're recording Sunday morning, so we are going to miss tonight's Blackhawks game, but that's uh, because we've got some stuffs to do, but we could still have fun talking uh, Svechnikov, breaking the, uh, the power play woes with... Uh, christian juice but uh, before we get into all of that as y'all know we have some business we've got some business to get into yeah (laughs) it's not quite time for the macho madness that is college basketball well it's march you know it's usually macho madness time but not this year you know why because of bad it's bad diseases so we got to get rid of those diseases anyway we can still have fun right we can still have fun DraftKings Sportsbook has got our back, America's top-rated sportsbook app. It's true. I googled top-rated sportsbook app. Boom! DraftKings Sportsbook came right up. So, here's what's going on. We're giving all new players uh, the chance to cash $100. My God! New customers, all you got to do is bet a dollar on any team to hit a three-pointer in any basketball game this week. Unfortunately, I did check to see if uh, backyard basketball counted. It does not yet. But they're adding games all the time. So, Fingers crossed we can add that. Oh, okay. So, you know, you're listening to the show. You're probably in Detroit. Uh, the Pistons even hit three-pointers, right? We don't win a lot of games, but we do put three-pointers in the basket. Jeremy Grant, swish, saving Lee, a second-round pick. Matt, second-round picks never pe- pan out. They always peter out. So out of the Peter Pan, we usually get the Peter, not the Pan, and this guy's panning out. Matt, you can bet on saving Lee to hit a three-pointer with this weird cockamamie delivery. We get a hundred bucks. It's great. So... Uh, make that bet. Get a hundred dollars. It's awesome. Um, yeah. So literally one three pointer by your chosen team. It's it's a hundred bucks. Sounds like a no brainer to me. Um, I I know they call it a slam dunk of an offer, and I always like to do a tomahawk. Ugh. Um, it won't be around forever. So don't miss out on this one, Matt. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Get in on all the action. And if basketball isn't for you, we all we are, after all, a hockey podcast. The DraftKings Sportsbook has daily odds on hockey, soccer, and so much more. DraftKings has paid out over $7 million to its customers since 2012, so they know a thing or two about big paydays. Download DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code THPN to get your shot to turn $1 into $100. $100 when you bet on any team to hit that three-pointer in any basketball game this week. That's promo code THPN for new customers. Get a shot at 100 to 1 odds on any basketball team to hit a three-point shot only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, Michigan, or Virginia. Only new customers only. Restrictions apply. Winnings paid out in four dollars bets. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Or in Virginia, call 888-532-3500. Woo! That lasts a little bit. Woo, Joggy. Well, we got we to crank up your speed. But Matt... <laughs> I try not to take a breath the whole time. So that's that's where I'm at. That's that's my claim to fame. You know, if you are gonna hold your breath on a Red Wing winning streak, you can <laughs> take a breath. It's happened. Woo! We got two of these in the show, baby. Woo! Matt, <laughs> if you're gonna hold your breath until the Red Wings scored a power play goal, get ready to breathe because we scored a power play goal. Woo! Matt. If you're holding your breath to see if the Red Wings for ever more. win a game without Dylan Larkin, by God, we did it! Woo! <laughs> what a monumental night last night was. Um, I'm going to throw a fourth one in there. If you were going to hold your breath 
on a watchable hockey game. My God, we did it. Man, we went four for four last night. No Larkin. Watchable hockey. Power play goal. I, I got another one. We scored five goals. Woo! Man. man. And there's no empty netters. These were real, real NHL goals by real men. My God. <laughs> man, this is the most thrilling night of hockey since, uh, I don't know, Pavel Datsuk laced up the skates. This was this was good stuff. Oh, I could, you know what? I know we got to play a full slate of games against these other NHL teams, but I could play the Chicago Blackhawks 82 games a year. I love playing the Blackhawks. Uh, it's up and down hockey. There's risks. There's scoring chances that are scary for us. I don't know how Patrick Kane did not get goal number 400. That guy was going bananas. He was very mad at Jonathan Bernier. He will not be sending him a Christmas card this coming Christmas. Oh, my God, Matt. I had a blast. Uh, your thoughts on the Red Wings doing five things we never get to see out of them. I actually, Mike, I wanted to have some fun with it. Uh, I want to play a game we don't play very often because usually I'm pretty strict with how the game should work, but I thought we'd have some more fun with it. Mike, let's play. Be the GM. Yeah. Come on. Go, video. Go. You can do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I wanted it to just be quieter. There we go. All right, Mike. So, for Be the GM, what I wanted to ask you was in regards to that massive list that you gave us. Yes. And uh, I, I can give a quick recap because this is the idea that I kind of had in my back pocket was uh, you're moving forward, right, <laughs> with the Red Wings from this game, and you, you are going to be... Taking something from this last game that means the most for the Red Wings' development sake, uh, from a positivity standpoint, uh, where you know where are you standing? So I want I want you to rank, basically, uh, where you stand on all of those things that happened yesterday. So I'm also going to put that out to uh, the Let's Go Red Wing Nation and the Red Wings rant faithful. Uh, so feel free to comment now. But Mike, if you could put in order for me of importance. Because I I've got mine down, you've got a two game winning streak. Okay, Mike, do you want me to write these down? I'm gonna write them down. Hold on, okay. <laughs> got two game winning streak. You've got Nielsen getting on the box score thanks to Svechnikov. Nielsen on box score. Okay. Juice, juice breaking up the power play drought. Okay, I got juice breaking the streak here. Okay. And the Red Wings finally getting over the Blackhawk hump. Mike, put those in order of importance for me. And today's be the GM. Um, now, uh, I'm going to give you a moment. I want to give you a moment to think about it. So just for everybody listening, the reason that this is a be the GM is because there's always, you know, as you go through the season, you didn't just come in and you're going to operate with, the idea you had at the start. You, you have to make tiny adjustments here and there. It's just like driving, Mike. Just constant tiny adjustments. That's, that's all it's about. It's what uh, being a GM is. You're, you're driving the car. You're, the whole journey matters. You can't just think about the start when you get hired and then hope that you reach the Stanley Cup. So, Mike, we're making tiny adjustments. And okay. basing so those tiny adjustments on your future decisions, you've, you've got to take a game like this that is it's pretty fun. From a, from a marketing standpoint, you get to turn around and, hey, look at all these great highlights I've got. Look at all these fun Twitter posts I get to make. Uh, but from a management standpoint and Steve Eisman's perspective, you still want to make like tiny adjustments. You still want to see little things that happen. So in that regard, Mike. I'll say uh, moment number four in terms of importance is Nielsen getting on the box score. Uh, this was the ultimate coattails uh stat sheet contribution <laughs> uh Sveshnikov, i'm surprised his entire jersey didn't unravel with all the coattail riding uh by nielsen and the boys uh evgeny was rocking and rolling that I, I will put that at number four number three is wings getting over the blackhawks i feel like this was a team that we already kind of had some momentum on and this was one of the top I think they were scoring on, what, 31% of their power play opportunities. So this is a great team. Uh, so to say finally getting over, it's just, well, 
it's a damn good team. So I think any victory you should be happy about. Number two is going to be the two game winning streak. It's, it's important. We've talked about building good habits. Um, so as much as we do want to tank, as much as we do want to get a good draft pick, at some point you do want to remind these guys what winning feels like. So at least to win two games in a row, you kind of be like, all right, maybe we're building something here. And I got to say, number one for juice breaking the streak. Um, the power play has been the bane of this team's uh, season where we've we've fared pretty well on five on five play. We've designed a game plan where we sit back, limit opportunities for everybody, and then just go hashtag hungry hungry hippos on any opportunity that goes on the uh, other 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 team's uh, defensive end. So to finally get a PP goal, Matt, and I don't want to forget uh, that um, Ken Daniels uh, the Red Wing play-by-play announcer said he was, quote, this is a quote from a televised broadcast of a Red Wing game, said it was a little re- a little weird to write PP on the score sheet. And Mickey Redmond followed that with, ha-ha. <laughs> 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 so, uh, Christian Juice got Ken Daniels to say PP on a real broadcast. Uh, it was pretty cool. But more importantly... Oh, no, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Red Wings, uh, like we mentioned a moment ago, Dylan Larkin has a, a vague upper body injury. So that could be from belt line and above. Uh, it could be a tummy ache. It could be a concussion. It could literally be a broken arm. It could be anything. Uh, but he's just going to miss the Chicago trip. But so much of our power play has been, well, Larkin, you bring it up, and then you dump it, and then you go chase it because you're our only fast player. Uh, and by God, you know, we, we didn't have him to watch. You know, the other te- the other uh, power play line mates didn't have Larkin to watch dump. Uh, they didn't have Bertuzzi to watch him do some work. So the other guys had to get involved. So, Matt, this was just a microcosm. Uh, other guys stepping up, uh, guys you wouldn't expect to uh, contributing. And that's that god-awful streak. I think we were, what, 0 for 41? It's finally over. Um, and, you know, maybe... You know, we get another opportunity here because Larkin's going to miss this game tonight. Maybe it'll just be a little bit more, a uh, little bit more hectic, a little bit more chaotic. You know, that's what we got to shoot for with the skill level on this team. And uh, I'm, ins- I'm, uh, I'm, in- I'm intrigued. I'm inspired. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. You know that, but, and that maybe there's more to come. The funny thing is, is uh, like we all gave Blashill a hard time. Maybe not us, but uh, everybody gives him a hard time because he says, look, this team doesn't score. So I have to keep figuring out how I'm going to make this work. Like how I'm going to make this power play work. How I'm going to make these lines work because any combination I put out there, we're a losing team. So, <laughs> uh, and and uh, another point we're going to bring up later is uh, Anthony Mantha's minutes dropping again. Uh, but I, I like the idea that you threw out there of the, of going for chaos, because this was something that you couldn't avoid. Dylan Larkin's out of the lineup. This is something, you know, he's, he's getting healed up. So instead of having to tell the fans, you know, Hey, we're going to let Larkin sit a game because the goals just aren't going in. I mean, even now we're seeing like that, that wasn't the, the case is probably that he's been hurt most of the season. So his, yeah. the, the lack of scoring touch is probably due to that. But, um, Hey, Back to chaos. Back to why I, I brought this up. You get to just throw it all at the wall and see what sticks. And I think that was important for the Red Wings because this has been a terrible power play, despite it being worse this season statistically than it was last season. It's not been good either season. And we've all been trashing Bilesma for the last couple of seasons for the man who's leading this. But when you lose a guy like Larkin, I think what the Red Wings got to do was say, just toss it all in the garbage. It's all gone. Hit the reset button. Let's see what happens. And um, what I liked, Mike, and I get to pat myself on the back because we only we only touched on this for like a second. Uh, but I I did uh, I did my my Prashant Dyer impression and I threw together a defenseman on the power play model to see what's going on Ooh. with the Red Wings. And uh, if y'all remember, uh, we took a look at this guy where we had the Lucky Ducks. We had the this guy gets it. The oofs like Mike Green and. Unfortunately, Troy Stetcher. Uh, but we also had the unlucky. Uh, these are the guys that are actually putting in the good expected goals numbers, but the on-ice shot percentage is just horrendous. 
And you can see, Mike, on this graph, for anybody that's that's watching on YouTube or on Twitter or Facebook, you can see on the graph that Christian Juice, and I'll use my mouse here, he's all the way down here at the bottom. He is literally the most unlucky defenseman to play on the power play over the last three seasons. So the effort was there. The shot selection was there. The, the creation of, of supposed offense, of expected offense, was there. It's just that the bounces weren't going. And we brought this up a, a week and a half ago. And I said, I th and I've made it our, our keys to the game since I, I took over for Jesse uh, the last couple of games. But it's been get juice these these opportunities because even though it's not going in, eventually they will. And it and it did. And I, I I'm just happy that you know what what we could put together was some sustained offensive pressure. And uh, it, it's been pointed out quite a few times that juice actually comes to this move whether it's. Um, on the power play around five on five that he, he does take the, he's, he's good moving with the puck. And I think it, it's about his, his ability to read what's going on from, uh, from his opponent's standpoint where he's going to have the space to come in front of the net. And while he's moving, he's getting the goaltender moving, he's getting the goaltender's eyes moving and he's able to get it passed over, uh, over the shoulder. And this is the second time he's done it for us. Um, if not, you know, counting some of the posts too, that have uh, just haven't gone his way. Yeah, but this is it. This is the culmination of playing. This is where like analytics steps in, and you say, "All right, juice, not going so great, but eventually it's going to turn around." And I, I, I think, I think we nailed it. I think this is what this was all about. Uh, this is where you you kind of make that delineation between who are the guys that when the production's not there, you still put them on the power play, uh, and, and the difference between the guys who can do very little. Uh, but are just getting lucky bounces, and we see a couple a couple of lucky ducks are also on uh, on the Red Wings model here. Um, some Chalowski's, uh, some Chalowski appearances, some Hronik appearances, uh, where the the expected goals just isn't where it should be. Uh, but hey, you know what? Let's not rag on those guys right now. This is more about celebrating Christian Jews. So I, I say, hurrah, and uh, and good for you, buddy. Yeah, I mean. Uh... There's definitely quite a few names to call out, um, you know, Christian Jews among them. Uh, Bernier, once again, uh, trying to pad that MVP resume. Uh, he did give up three goals, but, my God, the way Chicago flies around, it easily could have been six, seven, eight. Uh, he had a couple stops on uh, some Patrick Kane one-timers that I we've seen it so many times of those 399 goals where I thought, well, that's in. And, uh, no. Bernier stoned him, um, and they had some really good shots of uh, Kane sitting on the on the bench, going, "Man, hot diggity dog!" Um, but he, you know, probably not the G-rated version of that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Bernier did really well, and uh, we can't talk enough about Svechnikov's return. Um, I mean, this was you know Rob Van Dam coming back in like the 2003 Royal Rumble and uh, just cleaning house. It was uh, it was pretty inspiring stuff. Um, because we know the Blackhawks like to skate around with a lot of speed, a lot of skill, a lot of puck control. Um, so it definitely makes for a thrilling hockey game. And Sveshnikov, he just used that big body um, on his assist, um, on his goal. Uh, he's he's crashing, you know, putting himself in good positions, um, blocking his defender from getting the puck away from him. Um, it was a lot like a, a dad and a little kid a few times. And, you know, Mickey Redmond commented on Sveshnikov's strength and, you know, it's something I, I think we'd like to see more of um, kind of going forward. Um, yeah, it looks like Matt's got yeah, a little this, clip here. Yeah, yeah this is our, we got to show it quick. So uh, one of our keys to the game for this, too, was uh, not just Juice getting in on the power play, but we said just throw it at the net and get bodies in front of the net because that's, I mean, this is the second game in a row that we, we've had some success with that. And talk about we had success with it, Mike, with, with the likes of, of Ernie. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can at least say, despite some of the struggles that Svech has had uh, trying to get on this roster and become uh, a staple uh, for the main roster, <laughs> I'm talking like it's uh, the WWE. Um, th this is a guy that uh, easily, and nobody's going to argue with me, has more skill than Ernie. So if you put him in the same position that Ernie's getting, where Ernie's crashing the net, just put a guy who we know is kicking it up a notch <laughs> in regards to the skill level. And uh, two points, and, and this is the thing I wanted to talk about too. This is, uh, I actually took a minute to throw together the math here. Uh, Mike, the, the two points, the goal and the assist is great, right? But we know he only played 12 minutes, and that's that's because of 
ultimately him being on the the fourth line and how much time you know how much time you're gonna you're going to a lot to the other two buddies on, on his line uh but it also goes along with his experience so Here's what I decided to do, Mike, just to let everybody know what a strong game this was for the 12 minutes he played. Yeah. His expected goals for. So this isn't the percentage thing. This is just what his expected goals for uh, it is based on where he's getting uh, in front of the net, where his shot selection is, and where other folks who, who are on the ice, what, what they're bringing uh, to the ice. So it's, it's an on-ice statistic. It's not just his individual expected goals. But – Svetch being on the ice, Mike, we know that he did help Nielsen get on the box score. Uh, yeah. His expected goals for per 60. So this is something where you take that number, divide it by how many minutes he played, multiply it by 60 minutes so you can measure everybody equally across the league, was 4.7. Oh, right? Mike Connor, Connor McDavid's season average is 3.15. Austin Matthews, who is just absolutely killing it, is 2.89. Mike. Svechnikov was a 4.7 in this game. And this is just, this is simple math calculated from results from natural stat trick. Um, it's just, for me, I like, this is where it's at, right? This is where uh, Blaschel is making the comment that you don't, you, you can't just base it off of uh, a point total and say, hey, the guy had a great game. But, Mike, if we're going to take it from an analytics standpoint, he had a tremendous game and took advantage of those 12 minutes way more than any other player on the Red Wings roster has. So am I saying <coughs> that, Mike, he's better than Connor McDavid and Austin Matthews? Absolutely. No. <laughs> I, I, obviously, we're not saying that. But I, I do want to come to the production line throughout there. Does Fetch get more ice time today? I think you can. I, you have to keep Nielsen and Philpla and Svech together. I know a lot of people were, you know, threw up at that idea. But here's the thing. Svech was creating some offense, and those boys played well together. Keep them, keep them together. Elevate the ice time. I think that's all you can do at this point because they played a great game. I, I think whatever it was turned Nielsen on. Uh, and Philpla, you know, he, he's getting up there in age. I, I know we rag on him a lot. And he missed some empty nets last year. Um, but the guy, he's moving the puck for how slow and decrepit he is. Um, I, I just feel like he's been consistent. He's just lost it from a skill standpoint because of his age. But I I, I feel like what you're going to get here now is is maybe some consistent play from the bottom six if he keeps Fetch down there. So I want to say... Yes, he's going to get more ice time, but I want that whole line to get more ice time. I, I don't think you could watch that game yesterday and say, well, move Svetch up to the first line. Got to make that first line work. Nope. Keep everything the same. You can knock another minute off Mant this time. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'll elevate that that fourth line uh, because whatever they were doing <laughs> yesterday, just it, it looked good. Um, um, but yeah, like priority I said, one. Yeah, priority one is making sure Glenn Dunning's line gets the most ice time, in my opinion. Priority number two, uh, Blaschel is he's in hockey prison as a coach, and last night he had a really strong hooch recipe uh, <laughs> with, you know, some some grape grape jelly packets, uh, some rat tails, and somehow he stirred it together in the back of his toilet in his little <laughs> prison cell, and by God, he got. What was that expected goal? Is it four for Svechnikov? 4.7 per 60. Whew. Yeah, that hooch was a 4.7. Uh, so I I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't break up that line. Um as exciting as the prospect it might be to have Svechnikov get more minutes. And uh, I don't know how many more minutes you really want to give to to Philpola and Nielsen, but maybe maybe just maybe just a little just a just just, you know, just raise the volume a little bit. Just a little, just a little that, bit. Let's see what happens. That's a, that's a, another great point. Like where I compared Connor McDavid and Austin Matthews. I think we know the talent surrounding them is, you know, uh, maybe a step below elite. And if we go to like Dom Lachizan's, uh analysis league-wide, he, he yeah. put them as top, you know, top six forwards, but not elite like Connor McDavid. And we're talking about McDavid's line mate. Same thing with... Uh, Austin Matthews, unless, you know, they're breaking up Tavares and Marner and they're playing together. Uh, but <coughs> I'm going off. Going off. All right. Back to what I'm saying. Mike, Svetch did all that. 
with Bill Flo Nielsen. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Wait, we're we're sitting here trashing these guys all season, and and like I said, um. I, th- I think Philpola competes hard. I think Nielsen's the guy that we see him at the, the Philpola skill level, and it just looks like he hasn't cared for a while. So it, he's like a, it's like a double negative for Nielsen, and that's why he's such a, 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 a detriment to the salary cap and that, that high cap numbers because it looks like he doesn't care, and, and he stinks. But whatever it was with Svetch yesterday, I mean, the boy was crashing the net. Um, you just... You, you love to see it. Um, I, but yeah, when we're trying to sit here and, and figure out, did Svetch have a good game? Sure, goal and assist. But take a look at it from that analytics perspective and, and who he's playing with and which line he made look amazing yesterday. That goal's four per 60, baby. Light it up. Two games in a row. Now, uh, number one point on this, Mike, yeah. absolutely keep Svetch in the lineup until you play, or at least until you play the Carolina Hurricanes. So I... If he goes like a, an expected goals for percentage of like 10% tonight and then against the Blue Jackets, it's another turd sandwich. I don't care. He played well enough in this first game that he should get to play his brother, Andre, over on Carolina. Get the Spetch brothers out there. Get them knocking heads. I, I think that would be fun to see. And I think it would be good uh, for the Svechnikov brothers to finally, finally get paired up, right? I don't know. That's more of like just a just once. Yeah. Yeah, it just crossed my fingers. It, it'd be nice. I it's funny. I, I posted that online and, and people were um commenting about it like uh Blashell absolutely won't do that. But I mean he's not he's not like Mike Babcock. Like he's not gonna purposefully like try and motivate you to get on the lineup again by by scratching you for that game. I feel like like Blashill does right by these guys. I think it's just a matter of them still being on the team, which wasn't the case. Or Svechnikov just wasn't. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm going to make that argument. Taxi squad or not, wherever he was, we know he was just in Grand Rapids. I still think that those decisions come as a GM and coach. I'm not going to completely throw the blame on Blash there. But final point, put him in that Carolina game. He earned it with this one. Um All right, so I think we went over everything except for the fact that Mantha's been averaging over 18 minutes a game this season. And uh, last game, Mike, 16 minutes. He's dropping. Uh, He's he's becoming he's becoming someone that you're realizing in the third period. I haven't been saying Anthony Mantha's name as much, and and I think that that's sort of like where you play the eyeball test with ice time. Like you you just kind of realize. Oh, wait a minute. He's in those pictures of Juice's power play goal celebration. I don't even remember him touching the puck. And I, I got into a conversation last night with Greg Krupa <coughs> and um, uh, Keith Gave. Uh, Keith Gave, of course, friend of the show, uh, interviewed with us back in November, um, where I, I shared a video that you could actually see Mantha uh, after we scored. Um, just sort of out on a shift, ragging the puck in the third period. It, it wasn't there was no offense created. Uh, he threw the puck into the offensive zone, skated around the boards, took the puck out of the zone, never made a play to keep the puck in, um, didn't play it up on the boards to try and keep the puck in, trying to get an offensive chance. And this was right after a line change. So he was fresh. He was a fresh baby Manta. And um, yeah, I mean, that that to me was just something off the cuff where I saw it mentioned how little ice time he had. So I took a video of his next shift. and. That was what we saw. I so I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and say this is the definition of Anthony Mantha's effort in game, but it it's certainly something where Greg Krupa threw out there. It just kind of seems like he's going through the motions. And Keith gave uh doubled up on that and said uh, it's been an issue since Keith's been watching him in Grand Rapids. So I can't claim I'm I'm not saying that either one of those are true. I'm just throwing out there the other two opinions, but um yeah, I mean, it's something for me where I, I'm noticing now how little ice time he's getting because he is, he's, I mean, with large like, out, uh, the Red Wings, forward. Yeah, the Red Wings, you know, made a business decision in signing him to a longer-term deal, right? Where right. Um, this is a guy who's been productive for us, so even if you've had boo-boos, you know, we're, we're willing to, um, you know, commit to you. The thing is, it looks like Mantha 
is also making a lot of business choices because we're used to him uh, a lot like how Sveshnikov played last night. Um, you know, get using the body, um, kind of getting right in the fray, um, and using you know that that um, advantage with the with the strength, length, and size, you know, to score goals and make plays for other people. And it it, it looks like like his business decision is you know I've gotten injured doing that, um, you know, lost a lot of game time. And uh, it doesn't look like he's really entering into the fray as much. Um, so it, it kind of looks like he's timid. Matt, is that a fair word to use? And uh, it's just kind of, I don't know, you know, we don't know if he's, you know, nursing some sort of vague upper body or by God, maybe even a lower body injury. Who knows? Maybe even right. a side body injury. Right. Um, he could be fighting through that. We have no idea. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's just kind of discouraging because... We know this this team needs uh, needs his help. Um, I mean, outside of last night, of course, with the five goal barrage uh, from this offensive juggernaut. But usually, we do need uh, you know contributions from a guy like that, and uh, we know he's capable. And hopefully, he can uh, kind of turn it around. I, I kind of feel like this season, even if he you know goes through the year and you know maybe scores <laughs> not even ten goals, uh, this year is still going to be kind of a, a mulligan. Uh, because it's, it's COVID season, uh, you know, it's shortened season, um, uh, you know, but, uh, if, if it continues after this season, I, I don't know what you do. I don't, hopefully this is another one of those Red Wing contracts where we're just waiting for it to end. So, yeah, I guess I, I know when we, when he signed that contract, we had that conversation about like, well, this doesn't put him in like elite contract level. I think a lot of what's, what was funny is I instantly got, um, some, pushback on that but i i'm uh, look i'm gonna compare him to Connor mcdavid's contract i'm sorry but that we're just not gonna we don't have Connor mcdavid so we're not gonna expect a point per game right i mean we pretty much cut connor's contract more than in half to to have uh why am i gonna i, I almost said anthony philpola anthony mantha <laughs> that that wasn't gonna be a slip that wasn't gonna be i, I wasn't <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be sounding as mean as it would. Uh, but geez, Anthony still, Nielsen. Oh, okay. You're still now putting him. Yeah. You're still putting him in top top six minutes. So I mean, whatever's going on, it's not enough that we we expect from him. And I, I saw the notion last night, like uh, he he's still one of the top producing forwards on this team. But I mean, need we remind you that this is one of the worst offensive teams in the league? Like. Bobby Ryan's the one who's leading the way. Uh, so you'd think that the, the I feel like uh, Will Arnett and, and Arrested Development should, shouldn't should, shouldn't the the five point seven shouldn't the five point seven million dollar contract be be uh, be be better than the 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 the, the be, be be better than the one million dollar contract? Never no Arrested Development nothing. All right. Um, thanks, Mike. <laughs> you ever, so leave you, you ever out heard to drive of Arrested Development? One. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, I remember that show. It was what a what a <laughs> program that was. Oh boy, the developments were arrested left and right. I tell you, uh, no, I just your, well, I mean, your reference, your that the particular easy, reference lost me. Yeah, the, the if you had just said Mantha, just that, uh, you know, he got a bucket of paint and blew himself, I would, you know, understand what you're talking about. But <laughs> I guess the problem is, is that I just watched season four and season five, and Will uh, Arnett did that almost every other episode episode he was doing it's like a you know it's a callback to one time he did it in the first three seasons and now it's his favorite thing anyway uh <laughs> just no more rest of development references uh That's okay. <laughs> so what i was going to say was the easy layup regardless of what you want to say that he's still one of the top producing forwards on the team mike uh nine points uh 22 games all right long and short of it um not not great so it doesn't take much to out. lead this team in points <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, Bobby Ryan's proven that with 12 points. I, I just, what I, whatever, whatever we're going to be saying about Anthony Mantha at the end of the season, it could be tied into something with an injury. It'll definitely be tied in the fact that this is a, a, a season that is unlike any other with COVID. Yeah. But, but it's still fair to say nine points in 22 games, the, the dropping minutes, Especially with Larkin out, you think that Mantha would have gotten a ton of minutes tonight. And instead, 
Uh, everything, as Max Boltman pointed out near the end of the game, uh, he showed the uh, time on ice for the whole team where everybody's separated by a couple of minutes. I mean, it's just, it wouldn't be something you expect to see from a team that when, when the season started, Mike, we said, yeah, this, this team's going to struggle, but at least we have a first line. Yeah. I don't know. Obviously more to come. Obviously this is going to be something that we'll be able to address uh, with a more level head and hindsight. But when we're making these game to game reactions, Manta's production, nine points. I mean, it's sort of showing you why his, his, uh, his time on ice is dropping. And uh, to go back to the question we got earlier from the production line, are we going to see more ice time from Spetch? Why not? Why wouldn't we? Right. Um, I think everything we saw last night said he absolutely deserves it. Um, the production line threw out there that he's he's read some articles that Mantha wants to be in Montreal. Now, uh, production line, I need you to cite those articles. Uh, and also, Mantha, why in God's name do you want to go to Montreal? But we'll throw that out there. It's just this idea that there's at least some rumors, Mike, building around Anthony Mantha, according to, uh, according to our good buddy, the production line. Uh, <laughs> I... Give me, give me those sources, production line, and that, that'll <laughs> send, send them to us at a DM. We'll, we'll give you a whole segment on the next show and say, here's all the, the Anthony Mantha scuttlebutt. Maybe we'll have a new is, segment. Is there any chance that Mantha wants to go play in Buffalo? I don't know if, I mean, besides Taylor Hall collecting his, his <laughs> paycheck, I don't know if anybody wants to. Um, you're well, trying to get Michael uh, over here? Yeah, yeah, baby. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Let's get a little a little swapping of the disgruntled, sad puppy dog faces. Um, Matt, if it didn't involve a first round pick, and it didn't involve Mo Cider, would you sniff around in Buffalo? Would you sniff around? Would you put your your sniffer out there? I Jack think- Eichel, who's uh, he's got. Looks like uh, two goals this season, but that's because he's been a sad panda. So, Matt, would you sniff yeah, around? Absolutely. Everybody everybody on the board, I, minus first. Oof, I don't know if I can do – I don't know if Buffalo would laugh at us. We can't throw a first-rounder, and we can't throw Cider on the board. I think the – like, if this would be that definition, right, where we've been saying Steve Eiserman is the difference. He's the guy that's that's bringing people over here and bringing excitement, right? Because I'm guessing that if there's a list of teams that Eichel doesn't want to be traded to, so I'd have to go to Cam <laughs> right now to see what his contract says. I'm guessing we're one of them. <laughs> would, I, it's I mean, not fair yet, but if we were to call Jack right now, all right, if you're in a ballpark, some teams you don't want to play for. He's like, all right, Detroit and Ottawa? Um, damn. Uh, wait, back up. <laughs> Hold up! Wait, we didn't need you to say it right away. <laughs> what we want you to do is didn't hear our offer. Who the right. DMs are for each team. <laughs> um. All right. So I, I wanted to come back and, and just throw out there. I mean, th- this is this is something for us that we say is is like one of our weakest spots, uh, prospect wise, is center. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure that I I would do everything in my power if if this was a possibility. I mean, this this changes a lot. Uh, the only thing is, it changes our timetable quite a bit uh, because Eichel does have the power to make Buffalo like competitive for chunks of the season. Um, yeah. It's just, can he stay happy? So there, there's there's a lot that I would move to to bring him over here. I, I wouldn't say there's too much that you know. It's just it's that conversation about um, what Dylan Larkin does for the team is a lot different um, from what Anthony Mantha is supposed to bring to the team. And I mean that from a business perspective, from a face you put on the tickets perspective, from a guy who's wearing a C because it makes sense for the, wh- how the state watches hockey. Um, they, they love their homegrown boys. So Larkin's yeah. not on that list, obviously. And we don't want to trade a center for a center because that puts us in the same exact situation. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know if there's a lot of guys that I wouldn't trade to, to bring him over here. And I know... Because he would he would be the best Red Wing as soon as he touches the ice. So does that mean even the captain is on the table, man? Uh, I just no. Oh, damn. Okay. That's what I just I just said. It's so that, it's so the only name I reference was that Larkin I just wanted that not... I just wanted that sound bite out there. No. That Matt <laughs> you said Lark- your Matt, That Matt said Larkin is better than Eichel. Got it. <clears throat> 
No, it doesn't make sense to move center for center. I think Say it. Say it. No. I did. Say Larkin's better than Eichel. Say it. Say it, Matt. Get it on tape. Do it. Do it. Hey, we got we got the uh hockeywriters.com, Red Wings yeah. Canadians, Mock Mantha trade. Beautiful. I like all right, we're I, I can't click on that link the way that our comments work right now, but I can click on it later. <laughs> um so we're gonna have to come back to that and see what's going on. But um I, I believe you now, production line. Absolutely. I, I don't know how much further we could dive into this because I, I, long story short, I, I'd probably, I don't know, like, right. We're not, we're not getting rid of Lucas Raven. You said no Mo Sider. So I, I don't know who else I'd worry about. Uh, I mean, Raymond. Raymond would have to be on the, on the table. There's, you'd have to give up something to get Jack Eichel and it, Amantha is not going to be enough. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, if, if, I, I'm confusing, uh, confusing the rules there. Uh, but I took I guess... Cider off the board, and I try, I, I try to take first rounders off. But I, I, I think Buffalo would laugh at us. We'd have to give up something. Yeah, that might have I to mean, be that might have to be one we marinate on, and then we do a be the GM on you know which untouchable would you put on the table for Jack Eichel? Can I can I just say though to finish out this conversation? There's no yeah. way in hell this is happening. Eichel is not coming to Detroit. I don't think that makes any sense for. I heard he likes uh, Buddy's Pizza. You know, um, get him a square. Um, he can get it at Pizza Hut now. Pizza Hut is Detroit damn it. style. Pizza. That was yeah, you can get that it was anywhere. Our, that was our Trump. That card. was the one thing. We're out. We're out. That's like Iceman. You know what? I fold. I couldn't do. You know, we tried <laughs> pretzel crust at Little Caesars. We tried the hot dog crust. We tried. Um, the one with cheese in the middle. I'm out on Little Caesars. I tried Buddies. Now everybody's got a deep dish. I, I fucking fold. And he just throws his cards, knocks his chip over, spills his beer, staggers out of the bar, and flips everybody off. Ah, come on, Mantha. Let's get out of here. <laughs> and then uh, there you go. They get an Uber and drive um, <laughs> downtown to Woodward. Okay. Matt, uh, what do we got left for this show? Uh, just a quick shout out. Um, we used to do this all the time for all of our the businesses that we were traveling to and eating at, just to make sure everybody yeah. was keeping those small businesses in mind. If you're in the Detroit area, or I guess you're, you'd have to be pretty far west of it. Uh, Mike, I went to Doe Creations this morning oh. in uh, in Howell, where I where my house is, and uh, mm. Mike, this was donut like perfection. This was that. I think one of the biggest things about donut issues I have is the chocolate the donut shop uses to make their, you know, we have, we have an old fashioned in the back there topped with chocolate. We have, uh, they called it a Boston cream, but it certainly wasn't a Boston cream. Um, it was, it was the regular, it was the regular white cream. I, I picture the Boston cream is like a custardy thing, right? Uh, sh yes. Yeah. This, this was just whipped yeah. cream. Um, but Mike, like there's there's the um, there's another popular donut shop in Detroit, but they do a ter they use like the worst chocolate I've ever had on a donut. But uh, Dough Creations in Howell, go to it. They they they're brand spanking new, brand spanking new donut shop. This is probably going to be my breakfast every Sunday going forward. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys have to go check it out. They're so freaking good, and they have like old fashions. Those are my favorite donut. I don't have a picture there because they're underneath the chocolate ones here. Uh, because you little, you know you little, put the chocolate ones on top. Bourbon and simple syrup donut. Have you not had an old fashioned? Oh, an old fashioned like glazed donut. I thought you meant like a like a nice um you know John yeah, I had a Don Draper uh, cocktail yeah cocktail donut. Um, let me uh let me see if I can pull it up while uh, uh yeah I do uh, I do have a game ready for you, Matt. If you're ready. All right, let me let me share up this image nice. real quick so you can see. Let's get what the old the, donut here. Um, I went to cop for donuts last night. Another good uh, Michigan establishment. Um, it's run by former cops, and they sell donuts and they got coffee. Uh, I think the winner was the uh, maple bacon donut. Uh, it's covered in maple frosting and crumbled bits of bacon. Uh, so a quick shout out, free plug for cops and donuts. Uh, went to the location in Standish, Michigan. Um, which, my God, what a city. Um, Award-winning Taco Bell, um, if you do partake. 
Uh, but Matt, how are things with this old fashioned? That's a pigeon. Get out of here. <laughs> I pigeon. hit the wrong button. I hit the wrong button. Um, Can we get the pigeon back? This takes, oh my God, this takes forever. All right. That's the old fashioned donut. That, that's it right there. Uh, oh, it splits on the top. Yeah, this is, this is good hockey conversation. All right, Mike, uh, I'm sorry I did that. I regret it. That took way too long. Sorry. Are where's you running my, uh, to play our favorite game? Special. Yeah, where is he? Because we're running to play. Oh, oh, Pokemon! Pokemon! Yeah. Usually starring head coach Jeff Blashwood. What I'll do is read a quote out of context as a friend of the show, Paul Woods, who's friend of the show, Ken Kyle scores. Um, but I like to do a Paul Woods impression because nobody does a Paul Woods impression. Everybody does Ken Cal impression. So, man, are you buckled in? I'm ready to go. You're going to try and guess who this quote is from. So, Matt, this one, we're going a little, a little off menu today. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, you know, it's not on the cocktail menu. It's not on the appetizers. It's not on the entrees. It's a little off menu, Matt. This is a Red Wing player. Being very excited about uh, very recent events. Are you buckled in? I'm ready to go. All right. Uh, thank you for having me, uh, Red Wings Rent. Uh, very excited here. It's uh, your old buddy Paul Woods, friend of the show now for two years. Been uh, listening to the show longer than uh, the dinosaurs roaming the earth. So here we go. I'm going to read a quote from a current uh, Detroit Red Wing member. And Matt's going to try and guess who spoke. Here we go. It's always nice when you get one. End quote. I left that one pretty wide open. But Matt, Paul Woods wants you to know that this player said, quote, well, uh, it's always nice when you get one. Now, I probably said that because we're not expecting a second one. So <laughs> you got to try and contextually think who is very excited to get their one and only. That was a ricochet in case uh, <laughs> any other WWE fans in the house. All right. Um, I think some people might get mad at me here. Oh, uh, I'm I gonna know. Get mad I see you pulling oh, up no, the no, no. So, yeah, I am cheating. Um, <laughs> Matt, don't, don't Google the quote. You got to guess. That's not how you All play. Right. Who's that Jeff, Pokemon? Jeff Blanchel said, it's got to be nice. Get one. I know you said it's not even blush. Um, yes. Not all right. Broken. Google. So I'm, I'm looking at this. I I don't I don't think this has to be in reference to the last night. So I'm, I'm it's got to be. We're making no. fun of Franz Nielsen. <sighs> Matt, final answer. I'll give you one more guess if you want it. No, I'm 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 sticking with it. Bam! Matt is back in the game. Woo! Franz Nielsen was excited about one. Here's the full quote. It's always uh, nice a little longer between goals, but it's always fun. You need goals from everyone throughout the lineup, and that's been an issue. So it's always nice when you get one. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Franz Nielsen, for riding those coattails, stripping poor Svechnikov of his uh, Red Wing jersey, and uh, getting on that stat sheet. And uh, Matt... <laughs> What a heroic event from our beloved Red Wings. Uh, they got to put a PP on the stat sheet. We got Ken Daniels saying PP on the broadcast. Matt, maybe we'll have him say PP poo poo tonight. I can't Woo. wait. Yep. That's it. <laughs> Matt just loves that enthusiasm. He's a viewer of enthusiasm. Look at him go. I thought I was going to get, I don't know. I thought I was going to get a question. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We went a little bit longer than usual. Production line. Uh, we'll hit you up with some thoughts on Jack Adams about for the next the next episode. Um, I, I it's it's funny because I don't I don't know if you realize we have like Jack Adams prospects and Jack Adams or like future prospects that haven't been drafted yet and Jack Adams in the system. So uh, let me know which one you're thinking because I have an idea. Uh, but it could be you could be going either way with it. All right. Uh, but with that. Uh, you can find us at bodpodcast.com slash Red Wings Rant for all of our blogs and fun stuff. Uh, Jesse's working on his Rasmussen article that we told you about in the last Ooh, episode. So if he's listening, nice. this is his reminder to finish it uh, <laughs> so you all can see what's going on with Rasmussen. Uh, hopefully next time he picks Svechnikov and then uh, we can line up all the Google Oh, I can't wait for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but obviously find, uh, follow us at BOD Hockey on Twitter. 
um, and at brothers underscore of underscore discussion. Oh, you know what, Mike? I forgot. We said last week we'd be giving away uh, something that was signed by one of the goats, one of the greatest of all time. I have that item right here. Mike, do you want to put in another stab? And then uh, tomorrow morning we'll be putting out uh, the Twitter post. We hope everybody will be sharing. Uh, who is the who, who signed this item that I have that's signed by one of the greatest of all time? Franz Nielsen. It's very close. Very oh. close. I nope. thought because... Oh, it my is. God, it's a real goat. Nicholas Lindstrom. Yay. Mike? Okay, just real quick. I do want you to go into detail, but the book has a shiny cover, and it showed your podcast lamp, and it looked like Nick Lindstrom had a halo over his head. He is he is Christ himself. The Christ child, Lindstrom. Uh, there it God. is, signed right there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you can get yourself a copy of Nicholas Lindstrom, The Pursuit of Perfection. Uh, we'll be giving all the details tomorrow morning. Uh, this is for real. This is legit. Uh, you, I don't know why I said that. Uh, <laughs> Definitely not one of us signing it. Didn't make it up. Um, no, it's... Uh, it's, it says it's got the certification. Um, yeah, you can't buy we'll those giving, stickers anywhere. We'll be giving that sucker away, uh, and we'll have all the directions on how to do so, so just keep your eyes peeled. All right. Um, I think that's it, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye, guys. Ah!